Good morning. In my last lectures, I discussed uh, the evolution of economic uh, policies uh, until the post-Mao uh, period. The changes offered many things to brood over. They reflected uh, clashes of different visions and strategies, and more fundamentally, different views of human nature and its uh, malleability. Uh, before uh, we move on to the next topic uh, of uh, China going global uh, today, at the risk of uh, digression, uh, I would like to uh, brood over some questions regarding uh, human nature and economic organization as brought up uh, by the Chinese experience. From each according to uh, his ability to each according to the needs. Uh, this is the vision of the communist society as uh, summarized by Karl Marx in his critique of the Gotha program in 1875. Uh, the vision was shared by Chinese communists. Here, uh, production and distribution are delinked. While production is done according to abilities, distribution is made according to needs. However, can this type of society be feasible or sustainable? Would it be possible to produce enough uh, where output is distributed without reference to the abilities or performance? Would the people take just as much as they need would they not become greedy and uh, try to take more? For the answers to these questions to be yes, uh, first, there must be no human selfishness. But can there be an economic organization that goes against the self-interest? ignoring or negating material rewards. Of course, it is not impossible. The state may enforce the production, or the state may uh, enforce force distribution, as in the command economy, or the society may enforce it as in the caste system in India and elsewhere. Of course, uh, even the social enforcement is uh, often buttressed by the state uh, violence by the state. It is possible, but I suspect that uh, the productivity will be low. Uh, in the case of China, production increased dramatically after reform. This indicates that uh, people had worked less hard or less uh, ingenuously before the reforms. Once private ownership and uh, material incentives, if limited, uh, were granted, they worked harder and more innovatively, yeah, I suspect. If production uh, indeed increased three times, it had been uh, before the reforms in Shaoguang village. It meant uh, they worked uh, differently than in the commune days. In all likelihood, 
they worked less diligently because their take remained virtually the same uh, whether they worked uh, hard or not. And uh, this is a classic case of uh, collective action problem. When a good is uh, collectively provided, uh, in, in economic uh, jargon, when uh, it is non-excludable, it uh, suffers uh, from the so-called free rider uh, problem, a special kind of uh, collective action problem. A good is uh, non-excludable if for those who do not contribute to its production cannot be kept from enjoying the benefits of the good. Uh, uh, a good example is uh, Aesop's uh, fable about a, uh, tying a bell uh, around the cat's neck. Uh, you, you all know the uh, fable. Uh, uh, in a um, the meal, uh, there were many uh, my, uh, mice uh, eating up uh, the grains. So the owner of the meal brought in uh, a uh, fierce ca cat. And uh, this cat was uh, life-threatening uh, to the my, uh, mice uh, because it uh, ate up uh, uh, the uh, one mouse after another. So uh, the mice uh, held a kind of town hall meeting and uh, one young uh, uh, mouse uh, made a suggestion. Okay, let's uh, tie a neck around the neck of the cat. Then uh, when the uh, bell uh, 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 rings, uh, all the mice uh, can uh, run away. And uh, every uh, 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 mouse uh, clapped uh, their paws uh, saying that uh, it's a good idea. But uh, an old mice, mouse uh, who sat in the back uh, rose up and asked, who's going to tie the bell uh, around the cat's neck? Uh, and nobody could answer because nobody was willing to take the risk, which meant uh, loss of life. Uh, while uh, when uh, someone uh, tied the bell, then uh, every uh, mouse uh, could benefit from it. So uh, the uh, bell sound is a collective good, non-excludable uh, good, uh, from whose consumption no mouse could, could be uh, exempt. So uh, nobody uh, wants to take the risk and uh, the well, even after two thousand uh, seven hundred years later, I never heard there was a case in which the uh, mice uh, tied a bell uh, around the cat's neck. So this is uh, the free rider problem in the uh, collective farm, uh, like a commune. The same. Similar thing happens. Whether you work hard or not, uh, what you receive is virtually the same. Okay, if you do not work hard, uh, the production uh, will decrease and uh, your portion may decrease a little bit, but that decrease is shared by all. On the other hand, even if you work uh, twice harder or th uh, three times harder, your um, uh, share uh, does not uh, grow uh, as uh, in proportion to the efforts uh, you put in. Uh, so, um, well, instead of uh, making uh, extra efforts, uh, people may uh, uh, work uh, very slowly or less ingenuously. That, that's the free rider problem.
So when the cost outweighs the benefit, everyone may try to free ride. The collective farming on the commune suffered uh, this uh, free rider uh, problem. Of course, the socialist planners uh, were not idiots. Uh, they were, uh, of course, aware of the free rider problem. Uh, so they tried to solve the problem mainly in two ways. First, they addressed this very source of the problem. They tried to solve the problem by removing self-interest itself, by creating a new selfless uh, socialist man. But of course, by hindsight, uh, this uh, goal uh, failed miserably, even after decades of efforts. Secondly, uh, even when they have not given up uh, the hope of creating a new socialist man, they kept some linkage between work and take while working on creating a new socialist man. Uh, after all, uh, bending minds uh, takes time. So e until the, a new socialist man was created, uh, socialist planners uh, to maintain some linkage between the uh, production and distribution. Uh, in China, even in the height of the Cultural Revolution, a point uh, system was kept to maintain uh, some level of uh, material incentives, uh, which I will discuss uh, uh, later on. But even if, uh, this self-reported uh, and publicly adjusted the point system could not solve the problem, as I will uh, discuss uh, later on. From ancient uh, times, human nature and its malleability have been a topic of philosophical uh, debate in the West uh, and in the East. In China, the debate uh, dates uh, uh, from the uh, spring and autumn period, hundred uh, school uh, years or even earlier. Some Confucians believe that uh, human nature was innately good or selfless. In the case of Mencius, his evidence was uh, the feeling of uh, uh, compassion toward others. And some other Confucians believed uh, human nature was innately self-interest. But uh, Confucians as a whole believed in the malleability of human nature. Therefore, they emphasize the importance of education and self-cultivation, either as a way of keep, keeping the good nature intact or as a way of transforming the bad nature uh, into a good one. Uh, therefore, etiquette and uh, music as a means of cultivation uh, took precedence over reward and the punishment. On the other hand, the legalists generally believed that uh, human nature was uh, self-interested. Therefore, they emphasized reward and punishment as a way of guiding 
human behavior in a desired direction. The two different views of malleability of human nature led to two diverging modes of governance or the mode of ordering the society. In the summary of 18 uh, histories written by Zheng Shenzhi uh, during the Yuan uh, dynasty, uh, there is an interesting dialogue between Zhou Gong, uh, who was uh, enfeebled uh, in the state of Lu, and Tai Gong uh, Lu Xiang, uh, who was uh, enfeebled uh, in the state of Qi. Uh, located uh, in uh, today's Shandong province, the two states were neighbors. Uh, when uh, Tai Kong uh, said, uh, Qi, the state of Qi uh, simplified etiquettes and uh, relied on reward as a mode of governance, uh, Zhou Gong uh, commented that in the future there would be usurpation uh, of the princedom uh, by a uh, greedy noble. When uh, Zhou, Gong, uh, Zhou Gong explained uh, the state of Lu overhauled etiquettes and music to change the manners and customs of the people, Tai Gong commented uh, that uh, uh, the state of Lu would become weaker and uh, weaker. I strongly doubt this uh, dialogue had uh, actually taken place. I believe uh, this uh, fictitious dialogue was inserted to bring home to the existence of two different modes of governance and their relative uh, merits and demerits, one negating self-interest and the other recognizing self-interest. By the way, uh, Confucians uh, uh, traced their origins to Zhou Gong, while legalists uh, traced their origins to Tai Gong. If you read the Confucian uh, Analects, there is a passage in which Confucius laments for having failed to see uh, Zhou Gong uh, in his dream. As I discussed in my lecture on the failure of the uh, Maoist uh, model, um, Mao believed that uh, selflessness and the unity of a purpose would eventually release a huge reservoir of enthusiasm, energy, and creativeness. Ma and uh, Mao kept the private motive from assuming an important role in the allocation of uh, resources or products. However, until a new socialist man uh, was created, he had to take a stopgap measure uh, to establish a link between production and distribution to motivate the workers in the absence of a market uh, mechanism. According uh, to the uh, Second Chinese Revolution, uh, a witness account written by K.S. Carroll, a Polish journalist, uh, even at the height of the Cultural Revolution, motivating the workers was a big challenge. Uh, the solution was the self-reported um, public adjusted point system. The work points were reported daily by the workers and then th their points were evaluated and adjusted by a committee 
on the basis of the uh, peer group uh, evaluation. However, in the commune and the industry, there were a countless functionally differentiated jobs. While uh, there were uh, common workers, there were leaders, party cadres, nurses, teachers, drivers, etc., etc. It was difficult to evaluate across uh, different lines of work uh, in the absence uh, of the price mechanism of the market. In the market, the value of your work is determined by the supply and demand. Uh, and the price reflects uh, the value of your work. Without such an indicator, how can you compare and put value on different sorts of work? Basically, you cannot. At least in a, in a fair way, in an acceptable way. Mao's solution, partial solution to the problem was to minimize specialization and functional differentiation. Oftentimes, he tried to make everybody work basically the same work, be they leaders or followers, be they party cadres or common workers. But it was not always possible that way. The problem with that measure was that uh, without the specialization and differentiation, you lose efficiency. You cannot increase e efficiency. This equity efficiency dilemma can be found in any communal production system, uh, such as uh, 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 kibbutz in Israel, for example. Kibbutz is a place for communal living and working. Members work, reside, and eat together and share income uh, uh, from each according to ability to each according to need. It was, it's a kind of commune. And uh, the kibbutz was uh, made possible. The working, living and working together was made uh, possible uh, owing uh, to the government support. But this government support began to uh, taper off in the 1970s. So the nagging problem since then was how to increase production. For that purpose, the question was how to induce the members to work harder and more ingenuously. To achieve this, the kibbutz had to reward the meritorious. So in the uh, late 1980s, the kibbutzim decided that uh, they needed to change. Reforms were put into uh, place. At first, uh, the reforms were moderate. Members could work outside of the organization. That was a reform, but wages went to the collective. Apartments could be expanded, but the housing remained uh, kibbutz owned. But in 1995, change accelerated. Kibbutzim began to pay salaries based on the market 
value of a member's work. Uh, as a the result of such changes, the renewed uh, kibbutz emerged. They could increase production. Uh, according to the renewal of the uh, kibbutz, the cover of the book uh, you are seeing uh, on the uh, right side, uh, by 2010, 75 percent of Israel's 248 non-religious kibbutzim uh, fit into this new category of renewed kibbutz. And according to uh, some other studies, even the religious uh, kibbutzes also uh, under went uh, similar changes, uh, if later than the non-religious uh, uh, kibbutzes. These days, uh, psychologists, uh, philosophers uh, are in basic agreement about the self-interest. Uh, self-interest is derived from the survival uh, in instinct, so uh, self-interest cannot be removed. And uh, of course, uh, altruism can be there. Okay, some view that uh, altruism is uh, just uh, a different kind of self-interest. And uh, some view that uh, uh, self-interest and altruism uh, are overlapping, but uh, they both exist. And uh, some others, for some others, uh, self-interest and altruism uh, are two separate uh, things that exist within a human mind. But anyway, these days nobody claims that he or she can remove uh, self-interest. It's there. The question is, can we build a society or an economic uh, organization ignoring the self-interest? And um, as I said, uh, such an organization is uh, possible with the uh, application of coercion, enforcement. But the coercion decreases uh, uh, work ethic and uh, productivity. An economic organization then negates the self-interest that cannot prosper. The beauty of a market economy. What is great about market economy is that uh, through promise of a great success, great monetary success, and uh, th threat of uh, starvation, uh, market economy leads people to exploit themselves. In this way, uh, market economy uh, pros can be prosperous. It looks like post Mao reforms could succeed because it harnessed, uh, if to a limited extent, self-interest and the price uh, mechanism. Uh, thank you. Uh, in my next, uh, next uh, lecture, thank you for uh, listening. And uh, in my next uh, lecture, uh, I will start a new topic, China Goes Global. And in the first segment of my lecture, I will discuss uh, uh, China's transformation uh, as the great economic uh, power.